All right, hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe Hill from Sticks and Stones Bike Shop in Rexburg, Idaho. And we're here today because we're building a bicycle for Bart Miller. Um, he's got a Pinarello Dogma frame, um, pretty sweet. We're real excited to be working with this. And then we've, he's also got um, some MV wheels with white uh, Industries hubs. And then uh, we're doing a Dura Ace uh, Grupo from Shimano. And it's gonna be a sweet build. So a bike really is a sum of all of its parts. It's important that you've got the right frame, you've got the right geometry, you've got the right Grupo, you've got the right cockpit setup. Whenever I'm building a bike for myself or if I'm working with a customer to build them a bike, the first thing you have to figure out is the right frame. Uh, you, fit is everything, especially on road bikes, and geometry is also you know, that next, next thing you need. And so for Bart, he's already done that work for us. He already knows exactly what he needs here. He's got the Pinarello frame. There's some really cool tech stories going on with this bike. It has an asymmetrical design. So the symmetrical forces of the rider pedaling as they transfer through the drivetrain on just the right side, the bike is actually built to accommodate that. And so it has an asymmetrical frame design, but it actually translates to a symmetric ride. Then the next thing you're gonna be worrying about is your component grupo and your wheels. Those are the next two biggest things. The wheels are what's actually rotating, and so for accelerating and for climbing, uh, if, they, if those have a lighter weight, it's gonna make the biggest difference. Um, Bart's already got that figured out as well. He works together with Brian from Kelson Bikes to lace up some MV hoops to some white industry hubs. And um, we're really excited to be throwing those on here because they look amazing and they're incredibly light. The next thing, like I say, is the component grupo. This time around, we're gonna do the Dura Ace uh, mechanical grupo. So after you've got your frame and your components and your wheels figured out, the next thing you need to worry about is your cockpit. The spots on the bike where you're actually making contact, your handlebars, your grip, your seat, and your pedals. Bart's been a big fan of the Look uh, Blade 2. Um, but yeah, he's been a big fan of the Look pedals. He's, he's had a, um, they've got a good, they've got a good feel for him. He's been real happy with the weight and the performance and how they, how they feel. Cobb's doing a really cool thing with this seat. They've got it shaped really nice anatomically. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be bothering your perineal nerve. And then it's also got kind of a drop off, a taper on the nose. And so basically what that means is you're gonna have all the contact points in all the right spots and none where you don't want it. So he's gonna be able to ride harder for longer and faster. Bart's doing MV componentry, not only on the, the rims, but he's also doing some MV stuff as far as kind of in his cockpit goes. He's got some MV um, handlebars and MV stem. Uh, he's already pretty familiar with those. They're super lightweight and he does an incredible job with their high quality products. Yeah, now that we've got all that out of the way, we're gonna, we're gonna start putting this thing together. So we're gonna put the fork on first. Kind of a cool thing you're seeing with this fork, you can see that this is tapered right here. So Pinarello does, Pinarello was one of the first to do this. What it basically is, is they have an inch and a half uh, diameter steer tube at the base and an inch and an eighth up here at the top. What that means is that they are able to gain rigidity and strength in the steer tube of the fork without gaining any weight. And so putting the fork on first, we are going to slip the crown race on the bottom, the bearing race on the bottom, and get this bearing in there. We're going to slip this up through, we're going to slip that bearing in, get the race on the top, and then put the top cap, the headset top cap on. Slips down here. Some spacers. And the stem. We would, I mean you can see this is in, this thing's gonna be sticking out really high. Uh, we would chop that off right now, except that Bart's not here with us today. And so because of that we're gonna wait and we are gonna do that after he's here. Um, just make sure we don't have to cut it twice potentially mess up. <laughs> All right, so we've already got one bearing set installed. Next, we're gonna do the bottom bracket. Um, there's a few things to 
be paying attention to at least before you throw your bottom bracket in. These, this came pre-greased, so I'm not gonna throw more grease on here. But the other thing to know is that there is a side. They are side specific. The right side, it actually has a little R there. Um, and it's telling us the direction we need to twist it to tighten it. Um, they actually are opposite. The drive side is a regular thread and the non-drive side is a reverse thread. The reason they do that is so that when you're pedaling and you're spinning that thing, it's not gonna accidentally loosen on you because of the threading being heading in the wrong direction. <clears throat> Shimano even sent us this handy dandy little tool with the bottom bracket. Um, so we're gonna be able to spin this in here just like that. And we'll do the same on the other side and we'll be good to go. Now that we've got all the bearings installed, we're ready to start bolting on componentry. So we're gonna, we're gonna probably start with the crank. I usually just like to start with the stuff that's biggest first. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. It's just kind of bolted on as it goes. Uh, the crank will be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna be threading the spindle through. Um, we, need, we do need to make sure that we've got the right amount of spacers on each side so that he's got the right clearance with his crank arms um, from his chain stays. From there, we can also install brakes, we can install his derailleurs. stuff bolted on, the brakes, the derailleurs, um, the cranks on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the wheels. We actually already had all the wheels uh, laced beforehand so we're not going to have to worry about that. We do need to get the cassette on so that's the very next step. got the chain on, uh, we're putting the bars on, and we're going to get the shifters on next. These, uh, we're going to make sure and get these positioned at the right angle, and after we do that, we're probably about ready to start running cables and housing. Just finished putting on all of our cables and housing. We've got the shifting all adjusted, we've got the brakes adjusted, everything's dialed, we're almost done with the build. The last thing we're gonna do before we finish up today is we're gonna wrap the handlebars. Um, there's a few things uh, to have ready before you wrap the handlebars and a few things to keep in mind. Um, a few things that are handy would be some scissors and you may need some tape. I like to use electrical tape just because it stretches and it's easy to, to rip when you're done. You also need to make sure that your handlebar tape comes with a couple of extra pieces so that you can put those behind your shifters just so that as you wrap them, you end up being able to cover all of the, all of the handlebar because you kind of have to do some diagonal uh, wrapping there at the end. And if you don't have this guy, you're gonna have a hole. It just doesn't look good. That's it. 
We are finished with the bike build. We've got the bar tape on. And one last thing we might wanna do before we roll out the door is we could go through and we could just check the torque on all the bolts. Um, most every bolt is gonna have a recommended spec. So we can take a torque wrench. We can make sure that everything is how it needs to be. And then we're ready to roll. We're ready to go outside and take it for a test ride. Bart's done an awesome job getting together a parts list of everything that he threw on this bike. Um, that's gotta be the funnest part of doing a custom bike build is that you get to decide exactly what parts go on the bike. So you can really do your homework, you can read the reviews, and then you, you install only the things that you wanna put on there. there. That's definitely the advantage over going with the factory build. Bart did a good job. He's got the Dura Ace 9000 group, Grupo on here. Um, Shimano's done some awesome upgrades to this Grupo. They, they got all the power and all the stiffness and all the lightweight um, performance out of the 7900 series, but they kept kind of that crisp, precise, um, all the advantages that they had in their 7800 series. He's also done an amazing job getting together some NV wheels with the White Industries hubs, the NV handlebars and stem. Um, this frame, just can't say enough about this frame. There's so many tech stories going on with this frame. Uh, it's an asymmetrical bike that takes the, the symmetrical power of the rider with the asymmetrical forces going through the frame and they accommodate all of that so that then the bike actually rides symmetrically. The power transfer, it's all on one side. They've got that all taken into account. Um, Pinarello, they worked with Tori uh, for their carbon fiber and they've been working with these guys for years and years. They've got nano particles inside the carbon fiber. It's really is aerospace grade uh, technology going into a bicycle. So they, yeah, if there's a good reason why it's won several stages and of the Tour de France and, and just tons of other races as well. Just kind of some personal touches that go along with this bike. It's got this cob seat. This saddle is super comfortable. A lot of thought and a lot of design that's gone into this. There's just lots of contoured shapes that are gonna make it so that you've got all the contact points in all the right spots and none of the contact points in the spots that you don't want. It's gonna mean that he's gonna be able to ride more comfortably for a longer period of time and he's gonna be able to keep riding hard. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, be sure and post your comments below and we'll try and get you figured out. Uh, make sure and subscribe to Cycling Strong. And if you have any other questions for us here at Sticks and Stones, be sure and hit us up. We've got knowledgeable staff that are here ready to help at any time. And hopefully we see you out there on the road.